Euro 100 is the first geostationary satellite that we as licensed amateurs have been given access to. So it's got a transponder on it, which is uh, basically a repeater. And uh, the coverage is phenomenal. I'll show you a coverage map on the screen. It's downlink, so the frequency you receive on is between 10 and 11 gigahertz. And uplink, so the frequency you transmit on is about 2.4 gigahertz. So need slightly specialist equipment to get into it, but it's not as difficult as you might think. And today I'm going to show you what I consider to be the easiest way, not necessarily the cheapest way, there's cheaper ways of doing this, but the most out of the box and simple way to get access to QO100. And for those of you with the attention span of a goldfish who won't bother watching the whole video, just get yourself one of these. It's a DX Patrol ground station Mark II. Now, before we look at the ground station in any great depth, let's talk about aerial requirements. So you need a satellite dish. I use a 90 centimeter dish, which I got online fairly cheap. Some people go bigger for 1.2 meter dish. Some people I've heard in the UK get away with using a 60 centimeter um, Sky TV dish and uh, put a perfectly decent signal into the uh, into the satellite so you can get away with smaller dishes i would go for 80 to 90 centimeter as a minimum in terms of receive you need an lmb now the ground station comes with an lmb so you're set on that front and uh, then you need your transmit aerial now i started off with the dx patrol helix antenna Brutally, honestly, I didn't get on very well with that. The signal was extremely weak into the box. Um, didn't really, uh, didn't really do it for me. So I tried one of these big spiral antennas, which uh, attach it to the side of the house. You end up looking a bit like a Dalek. Um, that worked better, but was still extremely weak. So I, I don't recommend either of those two suggestions. What I went was for the um, DX Patrol Helix high performance antenna. Uh, it's a bit more expensive, but it does seem to do the business. The only thing with it is the plastic is extremely flimsy. And you'll notice in the photo of mine, it's got red electrical tape around it. That's because when I tried to push it onto the LMB, I actually cracked the plastic. So it is a little bit flimsy. The other option, with which is the one I would probably go for, to be honest, is um, this, what they call the ice cream cone from Knoll Engineering in uh, Germany. It's uh, The plastic's a bit thicker. I've used this on my portable setup on my 60 centimeter dish, and it works absolutely fine. So that, in my view, is probably your best option. Let's take a closer look at the DS Patrol Ground Station Mark II. So on the front panel, you have a power button, you have a rotary encoder knob for selecting and changing settings, and there is a display screen. There are six different displays you can select depending upon what you want to see. On this first display, you can see your power output and your SWR. This is also shown in bar graph form just below, the larger bar graph being the power output and the smaller bar graph being the SWR. You can select your intermediate frequency for the radio, so what frequency you want to transmit and receive. These are independently selectable. You can have 10 meters, 6 meters, 4 meters, 2 meters, 70 sems, or 1.2 gigahertz. All six of the selectable display screens show your receive transmit status. This will change to a red TX when you transmit. They show the clock, which is taken from your GPS time and the lock status of your GPS. If your GPS is not locked in, this will show a flashing weight indicator. On the second screen, you can see your DC voltage being supplied to the unit, the temperature of your oscillator, and the amount of amps being drawn from your power supply. On receive, this works out just over half an amp, and on transmit, this rises to about two and a half to three amps. So getting a meaningful amount of operating time from a battery whilst portable in the field is possible. The third and fourth screens both show GPS data, one in text, one in graphical form. The fifth screen gives you more configuration options, including a beep and the Morse code option, both of which I turned off because I found them incredibly irritating. And the final screen simply shows you your firmware version and the serial number of the unit. 
Moving on to the back of the unit, starting at the top left is your DC power supply. This is a standard barrel connector, one of which is supplied with the unit for you to connect to your power supply. The unit requires between 12 and 14 volts, so either a DC battery or your standard amateur radio power supply will suffice. The next connector across is your intermediate frequency transmit and receive. This is an SMA connector. This is where you connect your transmit radio. GX Patrol state an absolute maximum of 5 watts drive with a recommended optimum of 1 watt drive. So a QRP radio such as the ICOM 705 is an ideal radio for this. I can confirm that driving at 5 watts does sound a little overdriven so I recommend keeping that power down. If you set your intermediate transmit and receive frequencies on the front panel to the same band, it is possible to use one radio for transmit and receive, much like you would a simplex contact. This is particularly useful if you're operating out in the field and are only carrying one radio. However, it is strongly recommended that you monitor your downlink from the satellite at the same time that you transmit. That is where this receive connector comes in. In order to use a separate receiver and transmitter at the same time, you will need to set your transmit and receive intermediate frequencies on the front panel to different bands. The output to your receiver can be adjusted using this rotary knob. These next two connectors connect to the LNB using F-type connectors and 75 ohm satellite TV cable which is available cheap from online retailers. I paid about £12 for 50 meters. Once you get up into the gigahertz bands, which we are for both transmit and receive in this system, it is necessary to stabilise your system with a GPS disciplined oscillator. This prevents your frequencies from wandering and requires a GPS antenna. I placed mine outside on the metal TK bracket, which I installed to mount another antenna. There was also a 10 MHz output SMA, which allows you to use the GPS disciplined oscillator contained within the ground station to stabilise the frequency of your transmit and receive radios. I use an ICOM 705 to drive this setup which does not have this function fitted. In practice all the radios I've used to drive this setup have been stable enough without the need for an external 10 MHz source. On the bottom row is a phono connector. This sends the ground station into transmit mode when the centre pin is shorted to ground. This can be driven by most radios with a PTT output. The ground station is fitted with an RF sensing circuit. This switches the unit into transmit mode when RF is sensed on the intermediate frequency TXRX port. I found this to work pretty well on SSB but on data modes where it's advisable to keep the power down low I have found this to be a little temperamental. This rotary knob adjusts the Vox delay, so in other words, how long the unit stays in transmit mode after RF is dropped from the IF TXRX port. And the final connector is for our 2.4 GHz output to our transmit antenna. It's important to remember that coax losses at 2.4 GHz can be significant. I have 15 meters of Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7, which although good cable is not optimal for this application, I've done the maths and by my reckoning of the 10 watts coming out the back of the DX Patrol ground station only around 3 watts are making it to the transmit antenna. While I was able to make some contacts and did have some fun on FT8 this needs a little bit of a rethink. For this following test I used the Flex 6600 as a receiver and transmitted on the ICOM 705. You will notice that my signal is quite a bit weaker than some of the other stations using the satellite. Thank you. 